Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Welcome back to Business Innovators Radio. I'm your host, Frank Felder. You know, as entrepreneurs or executives of nonprofits, we often get so busy with all of the problems that are right in front of us that we can lose track of some of the longer-term, slower-burn short-term, long-term emergencies that may actually be lurking up behind us. And we often may say something like, well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, if we're thinking about something as seemingly mundane as our telephone service and hardware. But today's guest, Sean Mogul of Voice Array Communications, has a number of thoughts on that topic that will help you make the move up when you decide the time is right, the time has come for you to upgrade your telephone system, add a few handsets, add some capabilities, and so forth. It may be not top of mind with you right this minute, but after after you hear a few of the things that Sean has to say, you may say, you know, that kind of sounds like us. So uh, give a listen. Sean, welcome to the show. Tell me a little bit about Voice Array Communications. Who do you serve and how do you help them? Sure, Frank. Thank you for having me over. Um, Voice Array Communications, we're a small phone service provider in Northern Virginia. We provide phone and fax services to small businesses, nonprofits, associations, uh, plumbers, accountants, lawyers, you know, the everyday Joe, Joe, that is just doing hard work and want to be reachable. Uh, the way that we help them is by, one, providing them affordable phone service, but then in addition to that, providing them the features that they need as a small business to sound professional, to be available to their customers even when they are busy or somewhere else. So let's say, um, who is somebody, what kind of phone system is your uh, particular prospect? What are they using now, an old analog system, what they call Plano telephone service, or what kind of system might they have right now? They'll they'll probably have an analog system made from Panasonic or Samsung where there are a few different hardware devices that are installed. One is to actually make the phone calls. The other one may be the music on hold if they actually have that. Mm -hmm. And then there may be another box for voicemail. And all of these things are connected one way or another, and they must be configured individually. So that's what they may have. And then when you've got to make any changes to it, you've got to call somebody who's going to charge you $100 and $200 an hour to come out and make changes simple as, can I change my voicemail password? Oh, no kidding. So with us... We, we combine all of this in an easy-to-use online system where you just log in with a username and a password, and you click on your phone number or your extension the way that you can fit, whichever way you configure it with our system. And if you want to change your voicemail password, easy as yes, one, two, three. If you want to update your voicemail great greeting, you can upload it or pick up your phone and record your voicemail greetings. So going from an old system to a new one, you're in control. Whereas in the old one, the phone company's in control and they want your money. Ah, of course they do. Uh, so it sounds like in terms of the um, top level functionality, making phone calls, sending and receiving faxes, setting up voicemail or, or having voicemail functionality, the systems that you offer and support have those same top level functionalities, but you bundle them together in such a way that they're all part of one system and give the user easier access to make changes to it? Am I, I'm just trying to restate what you said. Is, am I hearing you right? You're, you're absolutely correct. So instead of having to log into or go to different places to make any changes to your fit system, you're in control. When I say you're in control, you, one, get unlimited phone service, so you can make as many phone calls as you want. Mm-hmm. Two, features such as voicemail, music on hold, uh, time conditions. For example, let's say your your business is from nine in the morning till four o'clock instead of a five o'clock business, mm-hmm. uh, and you want to get these phone calls from nine to five to ring at your desk. But as a business individual entrepreneur, you've got a family as well, but you don't want to miss these calls. Our system, if you want it configured, can automatically then start sending those calls to your cell phone if you'd like after four o'clock. Mm-hmm. So that's something called a time conditions. In addition to that. Uh, a virtual receptionist can pick up your phone. What is a virtual receptionist? You've called many big companies. Thank you for calling Dell. Press one for this. Press two for this. Mm-hmm. And, and and you know we, 
we can set this up for you not to be the primary answering service, but if you're unavailable, let's say you're on lunch or you're in a busy meeting, you don't, you still want your customers to route to something instead of just getting a busy or a just ring, ring, mm -hmm. ring. So with our system, it's all combined in one. There's no physical box that we got to put into your office. All you need is our phones. So this is all cloud-based? This is all cloud-based. That is correct. And it's it's secure and it's backed up and you're able to access and manage all of your settings through the cloud. If you want to go see your call history for, let's say, the past six months, oh, wow. boom, log in. You can see who's called you. What is the busy time that people are calling you? Maybe you, 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 you're you busy in the morning. You may want to hire somebody to answer those calls mm -hmm. if you're busy in the morning or you may want to have it. So let's say call comes in, rings three or four times. You don't pick up. Maybe you have an answering service that you're paying somebody mm -hmm. to pick up. The system can automatically then send those calls to those that answering s service. And then that answering service will actually know that you didn't pick up the phone call. You're either busy that this is for... ABC company, thank you for calling ABC company, because our system will send your caller ID to their system. So, I mean, this gets a little complicated as far as the back end goes, but we configure it and we help you manage it and maintain it. You're in control, but if you don't know what's going on, if you don't know how to make any changes, we make them for you. Interesting. I mean, that's a lot of functionality that probably most small business owners, I, for myself, would not have thought that I could even have access to that level of functionality. So clearly that's that's a, a big deal, but I think it's important for us to stop right here and talk about what VOIP is, voice over IP. What does that mean? And it, I, the reason I bring it up right now is it sounds like everything you've described it would not be possible with an old analog system, no matter whether you were using the biggest company in the world. So I assume that what you're talking about here is, is VOIP. Please tell us what is VOIP and in addition to what you've talked about here, what advantages does it have? Sure. So voice over IP is sending your phone calls over the Internet, making and receiving phone calls over the Internet. It's it's taking doing the same exact thing what your old system would have done in an analog in a live stream, whereas what this is doing, you've already got Internet at your office. You're already paying for it. Why not use it for an additional feature? That additional feature is being able to send your phone calls. So what voice over IP does is, our phone, your phone in your office communicates with our server over the internet. Um, everybody's got broadband co connection, so they have good upload and download speed. Um, calls come in, instead of running through the regular public network through the wires, it runs over your internet. So if you've got Cox or coaxial cable or DSL, it all works through that. And it works over the inter internet by sending signals as data. Mm -hmm. um, now, a lot of people have or, or had initially when voice over IP came out that, okay, if my internet is slow or it's down, then my phone service is down. Uh, and, and it's a very good, you know, concern that businesses should, should have and had previously, but it's no longer a valid concern. One, because of the stability of um, voice over IP uh, uh, internet service providers, internet, and then also our ability to automatically know that your internet has gone down and start routing your inbound calls to an alternative number, for example, your oh, cell wow. phone. So, And that's a built-in feature. No cost. Like I said additional, uh, uh, earlier, all features are included. Well, that's one of the features that is included. So instead of having physical phone lines come into your office, you just use the same internet connection that's coming in, and we send our signals through that. That's great. So... You obviously know a lot about this. How did you How did you first get involved? I mean, I know you're one of the co-founders of the company. How did How did this whole company, Voice Array, get started? Uh, it's It's a funny story. Many years ago, um, my family ran a business, and at that time, I wanted my family's business to sound professional. Mm -hmm. And I was looking for a service where, if we don't answer the phone call, can it go to voicemail? Uh, and then, can that voicemail be emailed? to the manager at the office who's running the business or manager's busy, nobody picks up the phone call. Can I have, I wanted a system where it could say, thank you for calling so-and-so, press one for the sales department, press two for this department. And I started doing research and when I found out that it was going to cost me an arm and a leg to actually go to a phone company to do that, like maybe I could come up with my system <laughs> on my own. So I started doing some research and we found a prototype that we took on and started experimenting with. 
And since that day, we have expanded into a company. So we did set up a system at that small business. And then from there, we started this thing. We were looking for all these features, but couldn't afford twenty, thirty thousand dollars in just physical hardware equipment to do what I wanted. For example, a virtual receptionist, voicemail, music on hold, the basic things that most, well, every business I think should have. Being able to place somebody on hold and transfer the call to somebody else, right? It, we didn't have that. And I wanted that, but it was going to cost us a lot. So that's how we got into this business by doing research and having a sort of a prototype that we started experimenting. And then since that day, we have expanded. We have done research and development. And in 2013, we felt comfortable that we could provide this to the public. That's fantastic. You know, it's a wonderful story of seeing a need and filling it. Absolutely. Rather than trying to tell people, this is, you know, you need this. You're like, I need this. A lot of other people need this. Let's let's provide it. I think that's great. So you talked about uh, the type of people, the type of organizations you help, uh, small businesses, small nonprofits. When how does that type of an organization know when it's time that you know that's like the lobster bursting out of a shell? How do they know when they need to start considering upgrading their their voice system? Well, there's usually two. Uh, instances where a, co- a business starts to think that maybe we need to do something about our, about our phone system. One is when actually they've run out of all their options where the phone system is not working, mm-hmm. right? Uh, when they don't have voicemail, somebody calls in, can I get into Joe's voicemail? Oh, I don't have a, we don't have a voicemail box, but I'll take and a note. You don't, I mean, yeah, I, hate that. If, <laughs> you know, I don't even know whether somebody's going to return my phone call if somebody's yeah. writing down a note and it's going to get to that person or, um, they're, they're, they want to place somebody on hold, but because they don't have an on hold music by, by mistake, they're hanging up their phone calls because oh. they're that. But the other way people come about knowing that they need something new is when they're moving. Either their contract is coming to an end or they're moving to a new location. Contract. Their service contract with their current phone service Verizon provider, or Verizon or Cox. And then Verizon will come back and say, okay, well, you will renew this and you'll get, you know, for this many this year, the same old feature, same old thing that they've been buying for this for many years without actually any additional sort of um, features or making it work for their business, right? Mm-hmm. You could have a thousand features, but don't know how to use it. Well, what's the point of yeah, that, sure. right? So it is at that time when people come across and looking for, is there an alternative to this? Mm-hmm. Can we get become more knowledgeable before we actually buy or renew our contracts or look for somebody mm-hmm. to provide us information? Because if you go and put in phone service providers, oh, first cool. you're going to get the big ones. Then you're going to get all these other companies that are either in Arizona or in California, and you can't even meet them face to face. And you're looking for your phone service over here. So, so that's where you know people will come in and are looking, and then they'll come find us, and then we start talking. So when they're at that point, and you know they they know they have a need, their their contract's about to run out, they're about to move their offices, whatever else has caused them to realize the need has arisen. What are the primary problems that they run into? What are the hurdles that they have to jump uh, as they're going into this process? What do they need to be aware of uh, just at the very beginning before they even start, you know, considering what, who they should call or what they should do? I, I think the biggest is the lack of knowledge, mm-hmm. having too many choices, okay. right, between analog to voice over IP. So the biggest hurdles that they'll have is either an internal bit. Uh, business politics that, oh, we've stuck with analog. Why should we move to voice over IP or a new system? I'm used to my old analog phone. I'm going to stick to that. I see. Fear of the unknown. Fear of the unknown. Mm -hmm. Or uh, how am I going to use this new system or that that if I am going to upgrade, how am I going to use this? And I can see where whoever the decision maker would be doesn't want to get with a hot potato in their lap. Hey, this new phone system you ordered is terrible and nobody knows how to use it. So I can see why a decision maker might avoid making a switch. And, and you know, I would do the same exact thing. Mm-hmm. But if, unless that phone company came out and actually showed you how it works, right? Not only <laughs> did they g- sell phone you. phone company does that? Right? Well, we do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah, um, that's a big differentiator. In addition to doing, making 
their phone service work, coming out and configuring it, then we sit down. And we're talking about one-to-one -one here. You know, if you've got three, four people, if you've got five people, we'll sit down in the conference room and say, hey, this is the phone, this is the on-hold button, this is the voicemail button, this is how it works. If you want to place your phone on Do Not Disturb, this is how it's done. In addition to this actual training, which depends on your office, mm -hmm. it could be 30 minutes, an hour, two hours. There may, there may be questions. We also provide a small little booklet that kind of goes over in simple terms. You know, how do you answer a call? Oh, well, you pick up the handset. How do you place a call? You know, how, how do you get into your voicemail? What is the default voicemail password? Uh, so they can get into and de do these sort of things. The things that, you know, <clears throat> I often tell people after I've hung up on them accidentally when trying to create a conference call on uh, my cell phone or whatever, uh, I tell them I'm telephonically challenged. So for me, one of the big ones is setting up conference calls. Is that also a feature that... Uh, absolutely. Actually, that is one of the things in the training that we'll show. So because we, we're not tied down to a hardware that... In order to give you a feature that we've got to come physically install something, we don't have to do that. All we've got to do is push a few buttons on a computer. Wow. So giving you call, call uh, conferencing is not an issue. It's actually included in every account. The limitation is the number of lines that you've got. So, for example, you're in an office of five people. You've got five lines. You can have unlimited people join from your office and five people from outside. And you don't have to go to another another server or another login. It's the same login that you have for your account portal. You just click on the conferencing tab, and it tells you what your username or password is that you'll need. And it's and it is. They put in a code. It says that you you are the first person in the conference. Uh, there's nobody available. When the second person uh, joins in, it'll, it'll ask them for their name. So it's like the same functionality you get with the super duper that you pay conference call. Absolutely. So you, not only are you getting phone service, but you're getting conferencing, you're getting music on hold, you're getting so many things that you would be paying additional for uh, from another provider. I remember we when we had spoken earlier, you said there's something about when somebody's getting ready to move, they don't realize that they they need to check out the what the system that's in place or the hardware. And, internet connection that's in place at their new office before they even think about which phone system they should use. What, what were you referring to? Well, for example, um, internet is required for almost every, every device that you're using in your office, right? So you've got an office and you've got one internet, one network jack, mm -hmm. and you want to plug in your printer and your phone and your computer. You mean at each desk? At each desk. Yeah. So... You need all of these ports available. Usually most offices don't have network jacks installed, for small businesses at least. They have old analog phone lines. So even if you do get voice over IP service, it's not going to work unless your network, unless your office is properly wired. Well, that's where we come in. Um, when, when we do our initial phone call conversation, we sort of run down a few checklists. Um, do you have a voice over IP? Yes, you do. Do you have a new office? Okay, you're moving to a new office. Okay. So then we come out free of charge to do a site survey oh, nice. to let you know actually whether your office is wired for internet mm -hmm. and whether uh, there's enough ports for you to plug in all of your devices along with the additional device that you're going to be using, for example, our handset, our voice over IP hands. So we come out, we do a site survey, and then we give a checklist that, yes, green light, we can go ahead. If it's not wired, then we also offer to wire it for you. So you don't have, then we don't call, give you somebody's number and they'll call this other company, mm -hmm. to call, let them to come wire it, and then we'll come back out. We actually, from the first time you call us till the day that actually phones are installed, you're dealing with usually just Single one person. Point responsibility. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And they know you by your first name, and when you call in, most of the time you'll get that person who's initially started the account with you. That's, a, that's wonderful. That's a, that's a big uh, advantage. Um, so, you know, when uh, people are considering making this change, let's say they're pretty far down the decision tree. Uh, I'm sure like a lot of business owners, this has happened to me many times. I've, I've heard many stories from businesses in every industry. You're talking to a prospective customer. You know that you can really serve them well. You know that your combination of services, products, etc., training, support is superior to what they're currently getting. 
You can bring them the same thing or more for the same price or less. And yet they still decide to, as I would say, excuse themselves from the opportunity of working with you. When that happens to you, what are generally the top three reasons or so why somebody tells you that, well, we appreciate you, Sean, but we're going a different direction? Sure. Well, there, there's a few, you know, few, few times we've come across and, and, and we've overcome those obstacles. Uh, certain businesses will want to go with brand names. They're like, oh, I haven't heard of you on CNN. I haven't heard of you on this. You're too, you're a small company. Mm -hmm. But we use that to our advantage. If we were a huge behemoth, you wouldn't be talking to a one-on-one -on -one person. You wouldn't have somebody who's actually going to lead you from the first conversation to the point where your phones are installed and then he calls and checks. Did you actually get the training as well? Do right. you know? So we use that to our advantage. And also keep in mind, you know, we're... We're a Northern Virginia company. We do business in uh, D.C., Virginia, and Maryland. So these places, we go physically to the customer site. Even though we could mail them the phones, we could, I don't know, send some third-party contractor there. We physically go that, there. A lot of your competitors. Do. Hey, absolutely. The person who comes out doesn't necessarily work for, for example, Vonage. Right. You know, one of the biggest voice over IP name out there is Vonage or Ring Central. These guys have a call center. Every time you call it somebody else, and it probably is not even in the U.S. Second, when they have people that come out, they're not really working for these guys. They've got mm -hmm. some subcontractor who's working for maybe two, three other companies. And his loyalty is not to you. His loyalty is to the a few different places that he's got to do his timesheet. Mm -hmm. Whereas our, our purpose is not just necessarily to have you as a customer, but make the technology work for you. You know, if you're a plumber... And you're in the office for only one hour. Mm -hmm. Well, who's where are all your calls going? You, but as a plumber, maybe you're. You, let me give you an example. Uh, we 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 recently signed. There's a recent contra, uh, contract we've signed up where we've got a plumber, and he says, "I want four phones because I've got four desks. At one time or another, somebody sits there. But I also want my calls to ring at all these four other cell phones." So the so it was like, all right, we can do it. He's like, what are you talking about? We can't do it. The other <laughs> company said, oh, it's going to cost me this or we can't do it. Well, we'll make it so the phones ring on your desk. If you're there, sure, you can pick it. If you're not, it'll auto start dialing your cell phone. And let's say you don't pick up your cell phone. They're, they're not going to get your personal voicemail. That's one of the things that, that, I, that I like to emphasize. Call goes to your cell phone. It won't call and say, hey, this is Joe. Thanks. You know, leave me. It'll go to your company extension. Say, thank you for calling Joe. You've reached me at this. Please leave me a voicemail. Then that voicemail is emailed to you and also is available at your desk to wow. be accessible. Uh, so, so there's many things, and, then we're, and we're pretty passionate about this. The reason, I can sense that. Uh, you know, again, is because we wanted this for ourselves, and we did the research and development, and we actually made it happen for ourselves, and we were happy, and we thought, now it's time to share this That's with the great. community. You feel the client's pain. I have one last question, uh, which is you talked about the training. So you're dealing with a you know telephonically challenged schmuck like myself, and you did the training, and everything seemed clear as crystal while you were sitting there training me, and now I've got my booklet, but I still can't figure out how to make a conference call. Can I call you and get support and get further uh, training on the phone? Absolutely. So, for example, it doesn't matter how many times you may have called us for the same. It is something we can walk you through again. Right. So oh, I, I want to I've got a new employee at desk number one and I want to change the name of that extension to say Joe Smith. I know you showed me this previously, Sean. Can you walk me through it again? Not a problem. We'll walk you through it and we'll also resend you any documents or any how to if you don't remember. We can not only show it to you and do it for you as well. So then we'll ask you, to, can you refresh your computer screen so you can see the screen that I'm at where I've made the change? So, so yeah, I mean, customer service, technical support, or just not remembering how to do something, it is all included in That's our great. service. So you're That's not paying fantastic. anything extra. So, no, and, and then we actually like, we love that because we, then we know people are happy and using the services that we're providing. And they want to use the features because anybody but can give you phone service. You know, anybody can give you a thousand features, but if they can't help you use them, what's the point of those features? This is all great stuff, Sean. So if somebody's uh, in the Maryland, D.C., Virginia area, they've uh, 
have a small business or a trade association, nonprofit, and uh, they're thinking the time's right for them to begin considering making a change. What's the best way for them to contact you at Voice Array Communications? Well, we love to talk to people. We want to first convince them that we can actually help them. So the best way is to give us a phone call. What call? What numbers do they call you? They can call us. We've got a 703 number mm-hmm. and an 800 number. I like 703 because it feels more personal. Sure, but you're not cool. calling some. So would you like, yeah, like 703-775-9033. 703. So 703-775-9033. Yes. Comes direct to Voice Array Communications. Absolutely. And then what happens when they call? When when they call in, we, we figure out, ask them, go down a list of a few questions. Mm-hmm. Where are you? What, what the location you're in? Who's your current service provider? And what do you need? You need are you looking for phone service and fax service? Uh, and then also get an idea of why are they trying to switch. That's always a very important question. Right? So is it because they don't like the other company or because the other company is not providing them what they need? So then we can let them – so then my conversation – or whoever answers the phone conversation can be fine-tuned to answer the specific questions instead of be a robot and read a template response, <laughs> right? Um, once we feel comfortable that, that this is a good prospect, that they... So you may actually tell them, you know, we're probably not right for you or you're not right for us? Absolutely. That's fantastic. Absolutely. So let's say they are, we are right. After the conversation, then we go and do a complimentary on-site survey. Mm-hmm. where we come in and say, okay, Sue's desk is there, John's desk is here, but the internet is coming in that closet. And are the wires properly wired to these desks? Because we've got to plug in our phones and test them out. So we go and do that free of charge. Everything is good. Then we let the client know that your location is ready for our service. Do you want to move forward? At that time, that's when the paperwork starts, right? We let them know a uh, contract so they can sign we feel comfortable. They they know the numbers, mm-hmm. how much they're going to be charged with, and then we actually schedule an install date where we go back, install the service for them, the phones, and at that time, if it's convenient, we uh, we schedule this ahead of time. That if it's convenient, we do the training at that time, or we come back mm-hmm. when you've got the staff. Maybe doing your staff meeting. Hey, we're going to be staying an extra twenty minutes, so the phone. Folks I can see can where listen. you know, especially if it's going to be installed and the staff's already in place, they're going to want the training right then. Absolutely. Because they're going to start using the phones right away. Exactly. And that's how it usually happens. And we'll tell them, you may, even though we're going to be running around in your office, just making sure your phones are plugged in properly, it's a good time for us to meet people in your office, know them by their first name, and also provide them with training and answer any questions they may have. Um, Right? For example, you've got a main receptionist desk. Uh, that that is going to be handling the calls. Well, that person needs a little bit more attention from mm-hmm. our end sure. than somebody who's just sitting at their desk and doing the normal daily sort of answering, where this person is sort of, you know, your gatekeeper. So then we give them more time so they understand what the buttons are, you know, what this red blinky light is for and all those sort of things. Well, Sean, that's a lot of information. I'm afraid we've run out of time. I really appreciate you sharing everything uh, on this topic with us. Because clearly, this is one of these cases where, speaking for myself, I didn't even know what I didn't know about voice over IP systems. So it's been very educational for me. One last time, that phone number is, you correct me if I'm wrong, 703-775-9033. Absolutely, Um, yes. And it comes in direct here in in your office in Northern Virginia. Yes. Sean Mogul, thank you so much for joining me today. Hey, thank you for having me, and I feel honored to actually share this because I'm very passionate about what we do over here. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.